So it is a measure of fitness, and it's also correlated with uh, dying. Something that is uh, very close to my heart, and uh, we are seeing more and more evidence about how important it is, and that's a view to Max, and uh, I'm sure uh, you, uh, you uh, Joe, as a, a triathlete and uh, as someone that uh, a, a educated scientist, I would say, know a lot about uh, uh, it. So can you uh, uh, explain to our audience uh, what is VO2 max and uh, how uh, VO2 max uh, uh, related to cardiovascular fitness and uh, what are the benefits maybe of a higher VO2 max to... Uh, health, wellness, and longevity. So the VO2 max is a, it's a, the maximum amount of oxygen that you can absorb and use during exercise. So it's typically done in a, on a stress test thing with so you're breathing a mask of, of oxygen and measuring the volume of oxygen that you consume and burn over a given period of time, uh, per minute usually. And what that is assessing, of course, so when, when you're talking about inhaling oxygen, what you're doing is it's going into your bronchial tubes and then into your alveoli. And then it's assuming your alveoli, well, assuming nothing, they either are healthy or unhealthy or not as healthy as they should be so that the oxygen can permeate the alveolar wall, get into the microvascular circulation, be picked up by hemoglobin, taken to your body where oxygen plus glucose uh, goes into the Krebs cycle and you make, uh, or, and you, you make ATP in, in the mitochondria. So the measure of, of the VO2 max in athletes, you know, a healthy 20 to 25, 29 year old will be able to do 55 ml per minute over a certain period of time. Somebody my age would be probably in the range of, of 42 would be very good. Less than 25 would be bad. So it's a measure of, of your oxygenation, how much under, under exercise under physical activity, uh, how much oxygen you can get into your blood and into your cells and, and make ATP. So it is a measure of fitness, and it's also correlated with uh, dying. <laughs> As your VO2 max goes down, your level of activity goes down, your functional capacity goes down, and and uh, eventually. It can't go down any further. Uh, so it's, it's very, it's, it's essential. It's a very good biomarker of fitness. And uh, the question is, so how do we maintain our VO2 max? How do we enhance our ability to use oxygen? And it, it goes back to no pain, no gain uh, <laughs> in the sense of, High intensity interval training is probably the optimal way uh, to push yourself to do wind sprints or to walk as fast as you can or take the steps, not the elevator. You know, whatever you can do to push your body, uh, I guess the term is hormesis. You know, you stress, you have to stress the body. Hans Selye, the physiologist, uh, the Canadian physiologist who really did Done, did so much work on stress and wrote about the adaptation syndrome. And he, he wrote about, he talked about eustress, E-U, meaning good stress, and distress, D-I-S, meaning bad stress. So if you draw, draw a chart and a curve, eustress gets up to an apogee and then anymore it becomes distress. We need stress to become better, stronger, faster, higher. Mm -hmm. It's being like the Buddhists say, mindful and aware 
of when the you stress, good stress, becomes distress and becomes a form of burnout and yeah. overexhausted, overcommitted, overwhelmed. And then, as Salier talked about the adaptation syndrome, with, with any stress, there's initial resistance. Then there's resilience. Then after resilience, there's exhaustion. And then there's death in terms of animals put in, into stressful environments. And it's the same with people. Yeah. So, so uh, we, we, uh, are, uh, we have a high number of uh, users in Insta Tracker. We are close to 100,000 users. And uh, uh, a lot of them have been uh, tested for uh, VO2 max as well. So we started to have a correlation. Again, it's unpublished yet. We are uh, working on uh, 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 writing a manuscript about it. But what we have tried to do is to, uh, uh, to build a correlation matrix between VO2 max and the uh, other blood biomarkers. And we are testing around 50. And what we have seen is uh, uh, was amazing that uh, actually uh, VO2 max is positively correlated with uh, markers such as HDL and testosterone and iron levels. So basically higher VO2 max, higher HDL, which is the good cholesterol, higher testosterone, higher uh, uh, iron, but negatively correlated with uh, uh, other markers such as APOB, which is, uh, as we know, it's uh, uh, better to have a lower APOB LDL, triglyceride, glucose, uh, A1C, HSCRP, and so on. So basically, we see a VO2 max as a master a health span a biomarker. When you have a higher VO2 max, as you said, you have a much better chance to have a better cardiovascular health, but also a lot of other uh, blood biomarkers that uh, uh, resemble of health. We took it one step further and we look at, uh, okay, what happened for a subpopulation that tested with a, a VO2 max that was X and then increased the VO2 max in the follow-up test. And we have seen a correlation, again, it's just correlation, with improvement of uh, blood biomarkers as well. So basically improvement of uh, the VO2 max will improve your uh, uh, blood biomarkers, uh, which is amazing. So I... Uh, uh, I tend to agree to what you are saying, that VO2 max is a really master regulator of uh, health span and uh, um, our audience should uh, take it seriously and try to improve the VO2 max as much as they can. Fantastic. How many patients have you measured this on? So we have, a, 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 I think that a, I don't have the exact number, but for VO2 max, we have around 10,000. 10,000? 10, yeah. And we, we are using, uh, it's not the test that you mentioned that I've done, uh, opening on a treadmill and having the mask is more like a estimation of uh, the VO2 max based on a fitness tracker, which is not as accurate, but it's still giving you estimation of uh, what is your VO2 max today. Uh, uh, fitness trackers such as Apple Watch and uh, Garmin provide the estimation of VO2 max. So, because it's very hard to uh, to do the test that you mentioned, yeah. uh, we are uh, using something that is uh, more uh, available for the population. But again, I was amazed by the result, and we just got it a few weeks ago, and we are really excited about it. So, absolutely, VO2 max is <laughs> is a, a, a very important uh, uh, marker. Is there any relation that you know of between VO2 max scores and someone maintaining cognitive function better as they age? Well, I wonder maybe it's a proxy measure or is there well, really like I, a mechanism? I don't have specific information, thing? but just intuitively, if your VO2 max is elevated, you're, you're going to be better oxygenating your brain. You're probably going to be making vascular endothelial growth factor. Uh, which enhances new new vessel formation, not only in your alveoli, but possibly also in the brain. So just intuitively, I, I would think that by increasing your VO2 max, you're going to be en enhancing your, your cognitive ability as well. Yeah. This makes well, sense. I agree. Yeah, I agree 100%. Uh, uh, it should uh, improve cognition as well. Um, and we see it with some of the markers that we are looking at. Yeah, very interesting study to looking into older athletes measuring their VO2 max compared to other individuals of their same age and also 
you know, combining that with some cognitive test. I don't know. Maybe it's there. <laughs> yeah. Right, Gil, do you want to mention the figure from Peter Tia's book? Yeah, sure. So I know that a lot of uh, our audience uh, read the book from Peter Atia that uh, he published uh, a couple of months ago. I don't know if you have, have you read this book, uh, Joe? Attila? Peter Atia? Peter Atia? No, yeah. I, I have. I mean, I've read excerpts from it. I've listened to some of yeah. his podcasts. Yeah. I yeah. I know some of the things that I'm, you know, what yeah. he's doing and uh, yeah. about aging yeah. and uh, and the VO2 max that he talks about as a, as you did a very good biomarker. Yeah. So, so basically what he, uh, uh, in uh, one of the figures that he's showing in the, uh, in his book is uh, basically uh, the relationship. What, what you mentioned about uh, uh, how VO2 max is uh, uh, decreasing with age, which uh, uh, we well know it's well known and uh, uh, published, but also how uh, uh, a higher VO2 max is uh, uh, have a, a correlation with a better performance. So, for example, and you mentioned it uh, when we started to discuss VO2 max, you said uh, someone in his uh, 20s might have a VO2 max of around 50, and someone at his 80s, uh, usually, if he's very good, he, he will have maybe a, a VO2 max of 40. And there is a strong correlation between a uh, higher VO2 max and the uh, 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 running at a f speed of, uh, I don't know, 10 miles an hour or a uh, uh, very low uh, VO2 max and uh, you barely can walk and uh, uh, it's, it's hard to, to you, for you even to move. So um, again, it's a, a, a nice figure that I will uh, strongly recommend to everyone that uh, interested in uh, longevity to look at, uh, at the book of Peter Atia. But again, it's a, uh, uh, summarize very well what uh, we discussed uh, in the last few minutes about uh, a, a VO2 max and uh, how important it is 